Hello, I am Rachel from Rachel Morgan Coaching, and I am so excited to be here today with sales expert Jason Sosabi. Jason, just like me, is a sales expert who has owned his own business for the past 17 years and has been able to grow it into a multi-million dollar revenue generating company, which is truly absolutely amazing. He's ventured into e-commerce, real, real estate, and the food industry. He, um, his main focus working within those industries are to generate sales and develop customer relationships within his business. And then he helps his customers do the same while also helping them skyrocket their sales. So I'm so excited to have him here. We're going to talk about how to generate, um, genuine relationships with your community so that you can skyrocket your sales. So we're just waiting for him to join. Hello and good morning and good evening and good afternoon to everyone. Hello, hello. Hey, how are you? I am so good. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited for our conversation, one that we're both passionate about. Exactly. Yeah, me too. I, I've been waiting for this, so I am ready to go. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome. So tell everyone that's here kind of who you are a little bit. I was just telling them that you've, you know, grown your business into multi million dollar generating company you worked in real estate e-commerce food industry uh, but where are you from <laughs> um i'm actually from uh, atlanta georgia so and i still live here um a little about myself i uh, went to auburn university and then graduated uh got into the technology uh world uh it was like mm -hmm. a implementation manager for a software company for a little bit and then um, I got my first sales, sales job um, with actually my brother. He started a food company. Uh, and uh, I got laid off from the technology job. This is after September 11th. And then uh, I got it to working with him, which is, you know, I'd never been in sales. So a lot of people told me at the time I couldn't make it uh, with my personality because, you know, I wasn't the charmy, uh, witty guy that uh, – Typically, people think of sales, so. Right. Um, but anyway, I went with him, and uh, we, you know, I started co basically cold calling a lot of people. Uh, anyway, we fast forward 10, 15 years later, later down the road, uh, my brother's the, actually the one who told me, you know, uh, this sales is about relationship, which I really didn't get at first. You know, I just was, I was just trying to make a sale, you know. Um, and then over time, when you speak more, I learned how that building relationships mm -hmm. is how to get repeat business, referral business, and so forth and so on. So, um, yeah, we took that. I'm from my, yeah. <laughs> You've got That's all what, this experience, which only just solidifies more what we're going to talk about, like right. in all different industries, right? So it's not just one industry this works for. It goes to show it works for so many others. Exactly. Um, so anyway, uh, I've been in the food business for like 15 plus years, helped the company mm -hmm. go over about 500 million in revenue. Uh, during that time, also um, bought two rental properties, started some private label uh, e-commerce and uh, Amazon stores. So, uh, and I launched my personal brand about a year and a half ago. Oh, true entrepreneur. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So. Well, so one thing that I feel like we hear often in this space, right, is that we want to be genuine and authentic. But I often find that we really don't know what that means. So I'd be curious to hear from your perspective what it actually means to be genuine and authentic. Uh, it just means, uh, to me, being truthful to yourself, uh, you know, come from a place of uh, a good spirit, um, right. you know, uh, and just be, you know, don't try to be someone that you're not. And, you know, not nothing against a lot of uh, books, but a lot of people read books and think they have to abide by mm -hmm. what they do in books. But being right. authentic um, is just being true to yourself and treat people nice and try to go into a sale with a win-win solution. Um, right. You know. 
Yeah, I agree with that. I um, I think being genuine is being true to who you are, not just being kind because you think you can have a sale, but right. being who you actually are and being kind throughout the entire process, whether, you know, you're just meeting someone for the first time or you're commenting on something, like really being genuine. And to me, being genuine just goes hand in hand with being a nice person. Right. But maybe you're genuinely not, right? Yeah. But staying true to who you are being authentic in the way you do things and not feeling like you have to copy and paste what everyone else is saying or doing right and uh yeah people i think people can see if you're not genuine you know uh they just people can see through things so uh, it's just uh i mean even if you're not if you don't think you're genuine i mean i think everybody's got some type of kind kindness to them um as humans so you just got to tap into your mindset and really um you know connect with yourself and uh, you know just be genuine yeah. that's you know i don't know how it's to explain it but that's um no absolutely and i completely understand you know one thing you had said to me too was that you know even if you're saying the right thing and you're charming um, you still have to be authentic because if you're not authentic in who you are and what you're doing, people really can tell. And I think we forget that the way that we carry ourselves, like people really do notice and people talk, right? right. And so we have to be true to who we are and show up. And it, it's more comfortable, right? People are more, they're going to establish some kind of trust with you when they're actually seeing who you are and what you're doing and you're consistent in that because you're being yourself and being authentic, right? Right, right. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people... So the sales process, you know, you, you have to follow up, uh, prospecting, all of that. Um, right. But a lot of people think once you close the sale, you know, the sales process, uh, in my in my mind, it just begins. It's really a lot of hard work. You got to uh, research your customers, know a lot about your customers, uh, you know, because if you just really want, you will never grow. You'll just become a medium salesperson if that's if you just go through the sales process of prospecting, closing, uh, presenting. If you don't build those relationships, then you know you never get referrals, in my opinion. And it's just you'll be a mediocre, mediocre salesperson instead of an elite salesperson. You have to build relationships. Right. I think what you said is really important is that the sales process actually starts once we close the sale and what comes next. It's not just this thing that we do in order to, you know, close the sale, close the deal. It's so much more than that. Right. Um, so I want to circle back to that in a second. We actually have a question. Um, any strategy for an SAAS business? And I'm so sorry. I don't know actually what SAAS stands for. So if you could put that and maybe Jason, you know, but um, if you don't, if you could put that in the comments, I'd be happy to answer that for you. Um, but one thing that we keep saying over and over again is that we want to build relationships. So to you, like, why should we care about building relationship with our audience and with our clients? And I want to circle back to talking to you about like closing the sale after the fact, but I believe that relationships kind of play on that. So I'm curious to hear what you have to say. Uh, well, I'm sorry. What was the question? Repeat the question. No, sorry. That was a whole <laughs> bunch of words. Um, why do you think we should care so much about building relationships with our audience and our clients? Well, first of all, it's gratifying uh, to build relationships. And then, you know, secondly, if you want to be an elite salesperson, a, a sales expert, you have to build relationships because um, you, in order to grow, again, to get referrals and have, play the long-term sales game, uh, you have to build relationships because, right. and I like to call them uh, relationships. I, when I go into a sale, I, I usually say, hey, I'm not here to sell you anything right now. Uh, I just want to build a partnership. And people think, right. well, partnerships take a while, but actually not. A uh, partnership starts when somebody actually starts trusting you. Um, once you, they start trusting you and listening to you, then that, partnerships begin, that partnership begins and you can build that partnership to another level. But, you know, people's like, well, I don't have time to build a partnership. Well, it don't take a year to build a partnership. It could take uh, just one conversation and then you build upon that partnership and, you know, rela relationships right. and partnerships go hand in hand. 
Right. Yeah. And I think that we often think that our clients are just people that are paying for us, paying for our service, buying our product, but they really like, we don't think of them as being like people or relationships, like in the same way, right, that we think of like a romantic partner or a friendship. But those are people that keep coming back to us. And there's actually these amazing stuff that say it takes six to seven times more money and time to attract new customers right. than it is to keep them you already have. So if we're building relationships, we're saving money, we're saving time, we're getting repeat business. And if they're that bought into what we do, they're most likely referring us, right? right. So it's that partnership, as you say, is so important when you're building a business because it's going to make it easier for everyone. Like it, it's easier for you because you don't have to sell and market them as much. They know exactly what you're about. You right. know what they're about. You probably know what their interests are already. Right. And it just, it's just easier to sell. You're not even going to be selling, right? Because you're helping them. Right. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so important, it's really. It's so important to help, you know, it's because if you bring them back valuable information, uh, any business owner, so if you're, you know, they're paying people for, you know, whatever their talents are. But if you sit and listen to a small business owner, uh, they're not really paying you. But if you can bring value and mm -hmm. get that relationship started, then they'll listen to what you have to say. And then that will lead into a win-win solution at some point. So ah, that win-win solution. I love it. So that it works in everyone's favor, right? And yeah. coming from that mindset, right? I think so often we think about how can we win that we don't think about yeah. how can they win, right? You know, it's a mindset. You got to think yeah. going into that, uh, you know, your mind that you want that win-win solution, not just me. Look, it took me a while because I thought it was just about me at first. You know, I need to get the sale. I need to get the commission. Um, so I learned over time that's not just me, you know, because if you go into a to us out just about you, then again, people can see through that and you can't, you can't really grow your sales to an elite level by just thinking of yourself. Mm -hmm. I see this person, they said they're selling software. So yeah, yes. I mean, building relationships goes all, in any business, whether it's software, uh, you know, social media, food, whatever it may be, relationship building mm -hmm. is a foundation of um, a good salesperson. Or Great. And I think um, also bouncing off of what you just said too, like, you know, if all we're doing is pitching people, even when you're trying to build a relationship, they're going to end up not wanting to listen to you because they're going to expect you to pitch them every time you reach out. So if you're selling software subscriptions, try not to just pitch every time. Try to actually get to know the people that you're selling to. Try to be genuine. Try to be authentic. Try to build that relationship, right? Like what we're talking about. Right. Find out when they need it. You can't sell someone something if you literally don't know why they need it. Yeah. And you won't know if you don't ask questions. So take the time and just nurture and love on and get to know the people that are interested or your clients, right? Build the relationship. Focus on that. Um, so, Jason, how do you feel is the best way to start building a relationship? Um. Well, I don't know if this is the best way, but this is how I do it. You know, so if I say I'm going into a new prospect, uh, I'm trying to sell you something, um, you know, I go through uh, LinkedIn and different social media platforms and try to find a little bit about you, your hobbies. So when mm -hmm. I call you, um, I have some talking points to, you know, uh, I might say I like to go outside. I see that you like going outside. So if I'm starting to talk to you, uh, you know, I'm not going to say you right off the bat. I'm, I'm going to get to know you. And I'm going to say, oh, hey, Rachel, I really like going to the mountains. Do you? And then, you know, that, right. that gets the conversation rolling and gets you uh, really, really knowing the person. Then they start opening up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's called a non-business um, yeah. start, right? Like, yeah. it's, it's talking about something that has nothing to do with business. So, for example, like, finding that common interest you both have, right? Maybe you notice that they like to go outside and you do too, right? Like I, I love to hike, right? I'm in right. the Pacific Northwest. Right. So if I notice that, I jump on that and talk about that. Or maybe um, the weather or maybe, I mean, we've all talked about yeah. COVID. Lockdowns are different throughout the world. Maybe you share an interest in a, an artist, a musician, something like that. Sports, but just yeah, sports, something. Or, yeah. sports uh, you know. Sports, yeah. yep. 
So. Yeah, and it has to be genuine and yeah. authentic because people will know that if you compliment them or say something and it's not real. So yeah. make sure like when you are using that technique that you actually find something that you, you do have a genuine interest in and that you can relate to, right? Yeah, and Just don't, you know, the and don't, 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 sell, don't sound <laughs> scripted. A lot of people, you know, it, even though you try to practice, don't be scripted because people can see that you're, you're reading off type of a script. So again, um, you know, speak from the heart. You got to know your product and service, of course, but uh, uh, do your research. Um, you know, somebody told me one time, one of my mentors, uh, Jason, the reason a lot of people like to buy from you because you're likable. So if you're likable, um, you know, that goes a long way as well. Right. Well, being likable comes down to <clears throat> having common interests and all that as well yep. um, and, and establishing that and being a real person and talking. Um, also, I hope I see your name right. I'm so sorry if I don't, but Param said building relationships is taking too much time. It's kind of a lot of work. You are absolutely 100% right, but I want you to think about this, right? You can make fast money, but it's not sustainable. You will burn out, Right. What's going to actually sustain you in a business for long-term success is going to be building relationships. It takes time yeah. because you have to earn genuine trust from people and they have to see that you are genuinely interested in their and what they um, need in them. Yeah. Right. So absolutely. It takes yeah. time. But once you start establishing that the magic happens, people spend more money. People are more likely to return more often. So the, the time it takes now will only reward you more in the future. So maybe yeah, I don't I mean, know. <laughs> I, th I think it's more hard work to go out and try to sell new people <laughs> than building that relationship uh, and growing that current customer's account. Uh, and then again, once you develop that relation, the referrals come, it's just, it's more sustainable and it's actually, it's harder work, but it's, it's easier in the long term because you don't have to keep calling and calling these people and pitching mm -hmm. new customers because that's, that's a short term game, short term game, game. In right. My opinion. right. Yeah. For really long term success, you have to build relationships with your community and know that they, and they want to know you have their best interest in mind and you can't possibly do that overnight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you just want to sell, if you just want to sell, go to like po the post office and sell stamps, you know, transactional. Uh, but right. if you want to be a elite salesperson or a sales coach or expert sales, you have to build relationships. And just in right. general business, you have to build relationships. That's, you know, that's got, that's what's gotten me to where I am today. And um, right. I think any successful person would tell you that. Oh, 100%. You know, my background being in fine jewelry, that is really key is getting people to come back and, and to build and establish that relationship. And even to this day, now that I don't work for the company, like I still keep in contact with my customers and or yeah. former customers. And, um, you know, we've built real relationships and I've had them at my wedding and I've been to birthday parties and things like that. And it, that alone is so rewarding. Yeah. And I think we forget about those things too. Um, I will say that I would also add to build a relationship, take note, take note of what they tell you. Do they tell you about any specific events happening in their life? Do they tell you about their birthday? Do they tell you about their family life? Exactly. Because that is the key for following up uh -huh. and building a relationship. Like you're going to know those things about your friends and your family, right? Yeah. So why would we not know that about our client? Right. And, it, and what you do, like if you know their birthday, say they don't do business with you. Right off the bat, I've had a lot of this happen to me. Like, it's taken two or three years of building, you know, building that relationship, and then the deal finally comes three years later. Three years later, but then, you know, they're with me for the next ten years. But right. you know, during that time, like their birthday, I just send a simple happy birthday card. That mm -hmm. that goes a long ways to, you know, oh, show absolutely. people that you care. Yeah, and if you handwrite it, the fact that you took the time to sit down and write it and get it in the mail, like, you know, we when we get our mail, we often get bills and advertisements. How nice is it to actually get something in the mail and have someone think of you? Right. And you, like, literally never know what's going on in their life. Maybe, like, no one wished them happy birthday. They weren't able to do something. And, like, just knowing someone is thinking about them can make someone feel so good. And, like, really, people don't remember what you say. They remember how you made them feel. 
Exactly. And if you can make them feel good with something, even like a birthday card, oh my gosh. Like you've got a customer. Yeah, it goes a long ways. Right. So how then do you use, so we talk about closing more sales, right? So we're so focused on closing that initial sale, right? And so we build a relationship, we close the sale. But what we want is to keep closing more sales, right? With prospects and past clients and all of that. So how can you use your relationship you have to close more sales? Um, well, you can, again, you can ask uh, if you've got a good open relationship, you can ask the your current customer for more uh, leads. Um, mm -hmm. And they'll actually, you know, again, they'll, they'll sometimes do it for you because they'll be like, hey, I referred you to um, – my friend Johnny, who does the same type of business, and you know he's looking, he's looking to do, you know he's looking for whatever product or service you're offering. So, uh, you know that's one way um, that comes to mind. Yeah, you know, and I referrals is a hot topic, right? Like, um, especially like how do you like how do you recommend asking for them? Um. I'll just be like, uh, hey, uh, Rachel, uh, you know, we and I have known each other for a while and, you know, we've been doing business. If if you know any other people that uh, are in your industry, could you just uh, tell them about me and my service? And, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it and you know, go from there. Yeah. You know, sometimes being blunt is okay to ask for referrals. Sometimes people don't even, like, think to refer you, right? Yeah. Um, which is so funny, you would think, but sometimes you just have to ask. Um, I will tell you when it comes to following up, right, with prospects and past clients, if you're really listening and you're really taking notes, you will, like, have always a reason to reach out to someone, right? right. Whether it's, like, a birthday or maybe you saw something that made you think of them, send that to them, Right. That's how you build a relationship, just like you would with a friend, right? How, like, how many times have you been on TikTok or Reels and you're like, this reminded me of this person. I'm going to send this to them, right? Right. right. And we forget that with our clients. Like, they're open to that. Of course, it needs to be appropriate. It shouldn't be unprofessional, yeah. right? Um, but, you know, you can't know that if you're not building a relationship. And, like, why would you go anywhere else when you know someone has your best interest in mind, they're reaching out to you, they're establishing a genuine relationship, I mean, seriously, think about like when you go shopping, do you have your go-to person? Do right. they take the time to get to know you? Like, I really don't have go-to people when I go shopping because no one takes the time to get to know me. Exactly. <laughs> right? right. And, um, you know, especially when we're trying to sell our offers and we are, um, you know, launching new programs, like why we should be reaching out to our past clients and being like, hey, like this offer came out. This reminded me of you because of your notes. Right. Right. <laughs> And sell them on that because then you don't have to spend the time marketing and worrying about how you're going to get people in your programs or worrying about like, you know, for your restaurant, how you're going to get people back. Like you, you got to like build that relationship to get people to keep coming back and know what they need. Yeah. And, you know, following up uh, after even, you know, like if you're, if you sell a service or product, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't really need something after it for like a year or two, I mean, it's still good to follow up. You mm -hmm. know, uh, just check in, say, "Hey, how how's the product? You know, yes. working for you? Um, I know you don't need anything right now, but I just want to see how how things yeah. are going, and you know, uh, let me know if exactly. I can if I can do anything else for you. Uh, I'm always here for you. You know, just things like that. It goes right. Following up without pitching, right? Like right, what right. we talked about. It doesn't always have to be about pitching. You can literally just find out how they're doing and yeah. find out how they're enjoying the product that they've been using or their their time and their, you know, depending what you do sell, right? Exactly. Um, you know, I have a story about that working in Find Julie. I had worked in two different locations and I had built this relationship with someone and, you know, I saw her probably every other week, right? Like this was someone I really got to know. I got to know her family, mm -hmm. like her daughter was getting married. I helped with that. Like it's, you know, those are special moments you get to be a part of. And I, when I switched locations, I didn't see her again for two years. Well, COVID hit and I reached out to her and I was leaving my job and I let her know like I was leaving. Right. And so I met her online. I hadn't seen this person in two years. <laughs> We met her online and we chatted for over an hour, caught up. She ended up spending this huge purchase 
right? Uh-huh. And I never would have had it had I not reached out. Right. It was literally a missed opportunity and a connection, and we exchanged information. We still keep in touch. And, you know, had I just been like, oh, it's been two years, she's never going to come see me and let it go, I would have missed literally, like, I would literally have left money on the table, right? right. Exactly. So that's, that's why relationship building is so important and taking notes, right? Yeah. Right. Taking notes, following up, you know, your mind, your, your mind too, it's the mindset of, of, uh, you know, just helping them and reconnecting. It's right. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, we're all craving so much connection right now and, um, just reaching out and saying, how are you? I'm thinking about you. You know, we're going to the, the winter season and there's a lot of uncertainty right now. Are we going to have lockdowns? Are there going to be restrictions? Like what's going to happen? Right. Like hopefully not. Right. right. <laughs> I know it's very different from Georgia to Washington, <laughs> but Check in with people. Ask how they're feeling, right? Just just check in. Be human, right? Check in like you would with your friends and your family. Exactly. Um, surprise and delight, right? And I really, I don't know, maybe you feel the same way, but I really feel like when you deliver on that kind of a service mm-hmm. and you build that kind of authentic and genuine relationship, people will naturally want to refer you because the experience but, working with you is so good. They want others to feel the same. Right. And, you know, when you got that intimate relationship too, uh, you don't have to be the lowest person. You can charge the price that you need to as well. You know, that intimate relationship, they don't really want to go, even if you have to increase your price for, you know, certain reasons, uh, cost of goods went up or whatever it may be, Mm -hmm. you know, that intimate relationship really, um, you know, you don't, People think, you know, people people do buy on price, but if you got an intimate relationship with a customer, I mean, unless you do something really bad, you're you're in there with them for for the long term. Right. Well, if you're focused on building a relationship with people, price kind of becomes irrelevant, like what you're saying, right? Because they know that what you're doing is good and they know that you're genuine and you're going to deliver and all those things. So, you know, always lead with the relationship versus leading with price. Right. Is what you're saying, right? Exactly. Um, so that's actually a good point. You said unless you mess something up. So how, like, uh, like unhappy customers? Like, how do you how do you deal with that? I know this went 180. <laughs> I'm throwing <laughs> you for a loop here. Um, but you know, I come from the mindset that actually angry and upset customers can end up being your best. Yeah. So I'd love well, to hear what you have to say on that. Well, yeah. Some of my uh, sometimes you can turn lemons into lemonade. So. Sometimes a, um, you know, something bad happens. It's how you deal with that situation. Mm-hmm. If you deal with it correctly, then I've seen my business grow with that person. So if mm-hmm. I fix the problem, uh, follow up on the problem, yes. and, you know, uh, make sure it's solved right. And they, uh, a lot of times respect that and they'll actually do, more business mm-hmm. because of that. Yep. hundred percent. Yes. You know, I always like to think that um, when someone is angry enough to tell you about it, they care enough about you and your business. And if you treat it right, you've got a raving fan for life and you do have to follow up and you do have to ask questions. It's really easy to get scared and be like, Oh, they don't like me. I don't want to handle this. They're going to be really upset at me. But it's really, it's like this limiting belief that you have to get over. They really just like they're emotional and it's not necessarily you that they're mad at. They just want a solution and yeah, you, have to be able to, you have to be able to listen. Right. Yeah. Right. Listening, listening is the key. They just want to be able to vent sometimes, you know, um, we all get emotional. So uh, yes. you just got to, uh, and a lot of times, you know, before you react to them, it's good to sometimes sit on it for a day, you know. Uh, yes. Sometimes if you sit on it overnight, you'll have a different perspective and they will too. So if right. you, that works as well. I used to have this saying and I still <laughs> live by it, but to run to trouble, 
right? (laughs) Literally, if you ignore things, that is so damaging even to the experience and the relationship with people, right? You you have to handle things head on, even when it's an angry customer, and listen. And, you know, you don't have to, like, give away all these free things. You can just, you know, listen to them. Find out what they want. Find out what the problem was. And and even just asking the questions and finding out can be really helpful in your business and knowing what you need to improve or where, like, a bottleneck might be or something that you might have not seen. Like, you know, really, your business is for your clients and your customers like you want to be listening to them and hear what they have to say because right. again not listening is damaging right yeah. you can leave money on the table so actually negative reviews and angry customers are the best right. i embrace them <laughs> i hope no one leaves them for me but <laughs> you well, have yeah, to like, you know i've been with a lot of sales different sales people and helped train uh, different sales people over my career and uh, i've seen some very talented people but they would talk so much, they would talk their way out of the mm-hmm. cell and they wouldn't listen. So, um, you know, it's okay to be, it's okay to be a good talker, but you need to pump the brakes sometimes. And re- like you say, really listen um, to what they, their pain points are. Right. Listening, active listening pers- versus passive listening, right? Are you listening to respond or listening to understand? Right. 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 So how do you, get yourself in the mindset to listen? Well, uh, it's, for me, it's, it comes natural. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's just something I get, I'm blessed with a, a listening. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an observer. So, you know, listening is yep. part of my DNA, I, I want to say, but, um, you know, if I had, if it, I guess if I wasn't me, if I would tell somebody is just, uh, you know, practice, I mean, you can practice listening, uh, listening to, uh, you know, just to get to know them, see what they have to say first before you start speaking. Right. Yeah. So leading with questions yeah. and listening, right. Listening to understand, especially when someone reaches out, right. Or initiates conversation. Don't just jump into everything that you do or tell them all the things, right. Cause you don't know what they need. So right. listen to what their points, listen to what they have to say, ask questions and then build on that. They'll right. see you more as an expert too, which is what we want. And they'll trust you and right. you'll start building a relationship. <laughs> it all right. circles back. Right. Right. All right. Well, Jason, that's all I have to ask you today about relationships. But is there anything else that you would like to add in, from your experience or anything you would tell anyone um, that's just getting started or wants to know how to build a relationship? You know, n- nothing in life is easy. Uh, it does take hard work. Um, build relationships. Don't give mm-hmm. up because it does. Sometimes it does take time. Uh, it takes years. Um, it, sometimes it takes months. But you know, don't give up uh, easily. Hang in there because when you build good relationships, good things will happen. And, uh, you know, just, uh, again, listen to people and really, uh, uh, really just be authentic and help, help them, uh, you know, bring value and information to them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What a great way to end. Well, Jason, how can they work with you or reach out to you if they're interested? Um, I've got a link in my bio or they can just DM me. Uh, I'm actually building a, uh, I've got a landing page right now, but uh, mm-hmm. it's not in my bio. So I'm, I'm in the process of changing my bio. So I would say DM me <laughs> or um, you can go to jasonsosby.com as well. Great. Bios are always an endless thing that we're updating, right? right. <laughs> so I'm with you on that. All right. Well, I will make sure to have you tagged. And so if anyone has any questions, you know, definitely reach out to either of us. We're happy to help you work through some ideas, strategies, um, or anything in general that we can do to help you. So, yeah. all right. Well, thank you to everyone who joined. We appreciate you. And thank you, Jason. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.